In this video, we'll learn how to use the integration method to solve for the vertical deflection and slope at any point on the elastic curve. From the previous section, we used this beam here to develop the moment curvature relationship. If we take a look at the coordinate system, notice how the beam is defined by the coordinates v and x. To be more specific, v is a function of x that represents the beam's vertical deflection at any point x and the slope of the beam, dv over dx, represents the slope at any point x. Also note, we can use theta instead of dv over dx to represent the slope at any point x. So the issue is, we have to express the curvature in terms of v and x, but as you can see from the curvature equation, it's not expressed in terms of v and x. And so we'll have to use this equation here. This is a nonlinear second order differential equation, and it represents the curvature of a smooth curve within the xy plane. And this equation can be found in your calculus textbook. I'll continue talking about the equation on the following slide. In most cases, the slope of the beam dv over dx is pretty small, so that means if we square the slope, the value will be even smaller in comparison to 1. So if we neglect this component here, we can simplify the differential equation into the following equation. Now we'll use the simplified equation to put the curvature equation in terms of v and x. Since the curvature equation also equals 1 over rho, we can simply equate them together like so. Now if you rearrange the equation and isolate for m, we'll end up with this equation here. On the following slide, I'll explain why we isolate for m. The equation we developed on the previous slide represents the internal moment function at x. This equation can be written in two alternative forms. If we differentiate each side with respect to x, we'll end up with the following equation. Since the derivative of a moment is equal to a shear force, we can substitute vx into the equation to obtain the function for the shear force at x. Now we'll follow the same process to obtain the second alternative. Now, if we differentiate each side of the shear function with respect to x, we'll obtain the following equation. Since the derivative of a shear force is equal to a negative distributed load, we can rewrite the derivative of a shear function like this. And this equation represents the distributed load function. Now we have a total of three differential equations to obtain the deflection function vx. In other words, if we take any one of these three equations and use consecutive integrations, we can obtain the curvature, slope, or vertical displacement at x. Keep in mind, every time we integrate an equation, we're introducing new constants. In order to solve for these constants, we'll need to utilize the boundary conditions. But before I go over that, I'll be identifying the sign convention on the following slide. On this slide, we'll be talking about the positive sign convention. We'll start with the diagram on the top right. The diagram contains the positive sign convention for the moment, shear force, and distributed load equations we derived from the previous slide. Now we'll take a look at the positive sign convention for the elastic curve. We'll start with the left diagram. For a positive deflection, the vertical deflection v is going upwards, and the slope theta is measured counterclockwise from the x-axis when x is positive in the right direction. This is because a positive increase in dx and dv results in an increase in d theta in the counterclockwise direction. Now let's take a look at the diagram on the right. By the same logic, if v is positive going upwards and x is positive when it's directed towards the left, then theta will be positive when it rotates in the clockwise direction from the x-axis. Now on the following slide, I'll talk about the boundary conditions. On this slide, I'll go into more detail about the boundary conditions. Alright, so based on our knowledge of the support conditions, we can use them to define locations where the deflection, slope, shear force, or moment is equal to zero. Remember how on slide 15, I mentioned how every time we integrate an equation, we introduce new constants, well, we can use these locations to determine the values of those constants. I've included a table containing all the supports you'll encounter, along with the parameters that would equal zero on the right. Notice how the table chose to represent the vertical deflection as delta instead of v. 
In addition to the boundary conditions, we also need to consider continuity conditions. I'll go into more detail regarding the continuity conditions on the following slide. On this slide, we'll be going over the continuity conditions. Alright, so if a beam consists of a series of several distributed and concentrated loads, the loading on the beam is considered to be discontinuous. As a result, we'll need to write the functions for the vertical displacement, shear force, and moment for each valid region between two discontinuities. While we integrate the equations for each region, we'll be introducing new constants. The boundary conditions wouldn't be enough to solve for all the constants, and so this is where we'd apply the continuity condition. We must use this condition to match the functions together. This allows us to account for all the discontinuities. For instance, let's take a quick look at this example here. For this particular beam, when load P is applied, the elastic curve will look like this. The greatest vertical displacement would occur at point B. Based on the elastic curve, it seems like we'll need two functions. If we use x1 and x2 to represent the x component for each function, then the first function would occur between 0 and a, and the second function would occur between a and a plus b. As per the continuity condition, the two functions must have the same condition for the deflected shape. In other words, at point b, the deflection and slope must be equal. Now on the following slide, I'll go over the general procedure. On this slide, I'll go over the procedure required to solve for the vertical displacement through the integration method. The first step is to sketch the deflected shape. Depending on the complexity of the beam, the bending moment diagram may or may not be required. The next step is to establish either a distributed load or moment function for each region. And the third and final step is to solve for the vertical deflection. If you're working with a distributed load function, then you'll come across four integration constants. And if you're dealing with the moment function, you'll come across two integration constants. As I previously mentioned, we'll solve for these constants by using the boundary condition along with the continuity condition. And this concludes the video for this section. In this video, we derive the equations we need to solve for the slope and vertical displacement at any point on the elastic curve. We also went over the conditions required to solve for the integration constants. And we also talked about the general procedure required to solve for the slope and vertical displacement through the integration method. In the following video, I'll be solving an example for this section.